Competing in any trading card game can be a daunting task. Not only do you need to worry about practicing for the event, but you also have to invest into travel costs and potential entry fees. The biggest thing though is the price of the cards themselves. Players are limited to what they can play depending on the prices of decks with all the other costs that go with competing. In this video I'll be going over these 10 different card games and comparing how expensive they are to play at the highest level. So some of the rules I am using with this, I am pricing out the top five decks for each game and then I'm adding those prices together. Now I don't compete in all of these games myself so some of these might be up for debate but this is all based on my own research and I am also using lists that have done well in events so these lists might not be the most average list but it was a deck that did well at the very least and then obviously only doing the minimum rarity of cards and if there are different variants of decks within the top tiers I will reduce it down to one instead of having a bunch of different ones so like in Yu-Gi-Oh there's pure runic control and Naturia runic and why Schwartz there's three different Sword Art Online decks that are viable so I am just reducing them down to just one of those variations so we can see a more diverse field of prices. All the prices are going to be done through TCG player and I've also done these prices on May 2nd so these might look different than when this video comes out and the prices will fluctuate over time and when doing the final prices any cards that overlap to more than a playset between the decks will be removed. So if two decks are running a four of or a full playset of something then I will only count the first playset and then anything afterwards will be removed from the math equation. And then this will show how much overlapping will happen within each game. Now, if a card is optimal at less than a playset, so cards like Baron the Floor is usually a one of, or cards in the G zone for any Vanguard deck, I will still be counting it as a full playset. So once we get past three Barons, then we'll start cutting more because I'm not super knowledgeable about every game and every game having an optimal number, but I don't think it changes that much from what I've noticed. So the first game we'll talk about is Magic. Magic the Gathering. Now I know the Commander is the most popular format, but I think to keep this fair we're gonna do Standard because Commander is uh, not cheap. <laughs> we will be doing the Standard format for every single game for this. So for Magic, the five decks are Grixis Midrange, Esper Legends, White Midrange, Red Winds, and Rakdos Midrange. And here are the prices for all of those, which brings the total to $1940. And if we take the average cost of it, it's about $380. $88 per magic deck. Here are a list of the duplicates in each of these decks, which reduces $677 from this and brings our grand total down to $1,263, which makes the deck average about $253. There's a ton of overlap between these decks. Now, the overlap happens when there's multiple decks playing the same color. So right now, there's a ton of black. Three of the five decks are playing black cards. There are 10 copies of Sheol Dread total and 12 copies of Fable of the Mirror Breaker which these are really big money cards. And just those combined shaves off $600. So once you get your initial set of those cards, then building into other decks in Magic becomes a lot cheaper. And a lot of the time, the same colors are playing the same staples. So unless there's a huge variety of every single color seeing play, it seems like typically the initial cost of the game will be really high, but it gets lower the more you invest into it. Next up is Pokemon. So the five decks for Pokemon are Lost Box, Gardevoir, Lugia, Mew, and Control Box. So all together with duplicates, that brings the total to $395, which is about $79 per deck on average. Average. Now, if we look at the duplicates, Pokemon naturally is just a cheap game. They make all of their staples really low rarity and really easy to come by. And because of the sheer amount of packs that gets opened for Pokemon, even high rarity stuff is still a little bit cheaper than most other games. But the main core of your deck, usually about like 50 or so cards, are going to be really, really cheap. And then the huge differences change within the Pokemon themselves. So if we look at the duplicates, there isn't really 
much here that is worth a lot. There's two extra four seal stones, six extra nest balls, and eight extra battle VIP passes. And that's like the majority of the extra cost. Everything else is a dollar or less. And you can very, very easily build decks for extremely cheap in this game. So once we take out the dupes, then the total goes from 395 to 343. And your average deck cost becomes 69. Nice. Next up is Yu-Gi-Oh. So the decks for Yu-Gi-Oh are Kashtira, Nachurio Runic, Sprite, Math Mech, and Branded. So with all of these costs, our total with duplicates is $1,990. So our average deck cost is 398. If we look at the duplicates, then there are some cards that stand out here. So Infinite Impermanence, there are eight extra copies and the 12 bucks a piece, which shaves off 96. And then there's other like one of cards like Zeus, Triple Tactics, and stuff like that. And Ash Blossom is also very used. Our total duplicate reduction is $190, which brings us to a even $1,800, which makes our debt cost on average $360. Initially, before I started doing this, I fully expected Yu-Gi-Oh to be a lot more expensive. I initially expected Yu-Gi-Oh to reduce a lot after we cut duplicates because a lot of the staples can be pretty expensive. Over the past year, Konami has done an insanely great job reprinting these really powerful hand traps and cards like that to where now the hand traps have become a lot cheaper and a lot of the money now is within the archetype itself. So that's why Cash Tira is the most expensive deck here because they have a ton of cards that are like 20 plus dollars and the staples that are a really high price tag aren't really used within these decks at the moment. Things like Triple Tactics Thrust and Pot of Prosperity. Yu-Gi-Oh does suffer from the rule I'm doing of optimal card amounts but currently there doesn't seem to be that much messing with it. It's like Zeus is the primary one. So Yu-Gi-Oh could be cheaper than it actually shows on here but for the sake of this video we're doing it like this. Next up is my main game which is Vanguard. So kind of the whole purpose I've done this video is because Vanguard has had a real big price problem recently and I wanted to compare it with every other card game. So the decks I'm doing for Vanguard are Chronoja, Ava, Overlord, Youthbook, and Minerva. And here are the prices of these decks. Our grand total with duplicates account for is $2,255, which makes our average deck cost $451. Now, if we go into the duplicates, Vanguard kind of suffers from this because a lot of the time, it's very nation and archetype based on the decks and decks kind of build themselves right now in standard. And because of the nation system, there are very, very, very few cards that can actually overlap with each other unless they're in the same nation. And the one card that does overlap in all of these decks is Elementara Sanctitude. Now, since Sanctitude is at a hard one of, I'm counting just one as a playset. So there are four extra of them and they're 25 a piece. So we reduce $100 off of the Vanguard price. And there's also Persona Ride Chalice. Two decks have one, which it's also just a hard one of. So we shave off another $18 from there. And then the rest of it is just cards between Youth Book and Minerva because they're from the same nation. And it's just mostly your generic just staple cards for a nation, like effects, triggers, and over trigger and PGs. So altogether, Vanguard reduces by $211, which takes our total down to $2,044 and our deck average $409. Next up is Y Shorts. So the decks I'm doing with Y Shorts is SAO with Alice and Silica, the Escanor deck, eight standby quintuplets, Hollow Live, and Dual Laner Tokyo Avengers. So altogether, our price goes up to $795 with an average of $159 per deck. There are no duplicates in Y Shorts. And I could have done the like three different Sword Art Online decks because they're all pretty viable. But for the sake of the video, I wanted to see without similar decks within there, which makes Y Shorts just impossible to reduce because of just how the game functions. And you can only play cards within specific titles within each other. So you can't mix Sword Art Online cards with Seven Deadly Sins cards, stuff like that. So Y Shorts' cost does not go down. And the big thing to understand with it is if you want to continuously compete, you're going to have to buy into new sets a lot of the time because Y Shorts doesn't consistently support all of the sets all the time. Y Shorts also has, from what I've noticed, a really long lifespan for the meta decks. A lot of the time, these decks will last a year at minimum. You will be able to easily have enough money by then to buy into a new deck. And the, the cost of of buying into decks on 
on average is cheaper than everything we've seen so far other than Pokemon. Next up is One Piece. So the decks I'm doing for One Piece is Zoro, Captain Kid, Kinemon, Whitebeard, and Evencoff. And all together, our total with duplicates accounted for it is $615, which makes our deck cost average $123. So I'm not a One Piece player myself, but what I've noticed from looking at these decks is because of how the color system works, a lot of the times these colors have packages within them where if you play that color, you're going to play basically a bunch of these certain cards and you'll be able to use those cards in every single deck of that color. So two of these decks are green and two of these decks are red and they both have the individual packages within them. Between cutting all of the duplicates from these, we reduce the price by $87, which brings our grand total with no duplicates down from $615 to $528 and our deck cost average being $106 per deck. Now, One Piece is still a very new game, so I'm unsure on how much these prices will change over time. But for now, this is a pretty solid starting point for any new card game. Next up is Digimon. So the decks I'm doing for Digimon are Biezomon, Hunters, Red Hybrid, War Greymon, and Chaos Dramon. And our initial cost is $520, which makes our cost average $104. And none of these decks have any duplicates within them, so that will be our final total. So Digimon is very interesting. I thought it was a game that was pretty expensive, but there's two decks on here that are $55, and then two more decks that are $100, and only one other deck that breaks $200 on here. So being able to compete in Digimon is actually very cheap. Just the one issue with it is it has the white shorts problem, it seems like, where a lot of your cards won't overlap. So if you want to play a new deck, you basically have to buy a full new deck without being able to use your old stuff. Now, I could be wrong. I don't personally play Digimon, but that is my notice for at least competing in the highest level. But getting into competitive Digimon seems to be one of the cheaper games we've seen. Next up is Bandai's newest card game that just came out, Battle Spirits. So I really wanted to put a game on here that was fresh off the market and seems to be pretty hyped to see how expensive this game is. So Battle Spirits, the decks I'm using is Red Pterosaur, Purple Curse, White Control, Siege Worm, and Purple Soul Control. So here are the prices for all of those, which makes our grand total $1,110 and makes our cost average $222. So every deck on here breaks $200. But once we go into the duplicates, there is a very clear reason why. Every single one of these decks is running four copies of Absolute Ice Shield, which is a $30 card. So there are 20 copies here total. So there are 16 extra. Makes us reduce $480 from our cost whenever we take out duplicates, which is insane. There's also some other semi-pricey cards on here, like Infernal King Curse Dragon. There's two extra copies of those. Star Blast Draw is $1.50, but it's ran as almost a four of in every single deck. So we shave off $15 from that. There's 13 burning forces, which they're a dollar a piece. And there's two extra Gigano Vexes, which they're $17 a piece. And then a bunch of one or two ofs of cheap cards. So with all of the duplicates being cut in mind, our total cost goes from $1,110 to $511 and makes our average debt cost $102, which is an insane jump. Basically, once you buy your absolute ice shields, all of these decks are $120 cheaper. So they all become really about a hundred dollars in order to build a new deck each time which is a pretty solid amount on the cheaper end of most games next up is flesh and blood so flesh and blood is a little little crazy so the five decks i'm using on here are azalea islander briar dash and lexi and here are the deck costs azalea is the only deck on here out of all 10 of these games that breaks a thousand dollars and it's not like the other decks are much cheaper either so our grand total with no duplicates accounted for is $3,720, which makes our deck average $744, which is absolutely insane. Now, it's a completely different story once we look into the duplicates. There's two really big things immediately stand out with duplicates. Four of the five decks are running a one of equipment called Fyandal's Spring Tunic, which is a $230 card. So if we take out the three extra, then we instantly shave off $690, which brings our total down to about $3,000. And then there's also Command and Conquer, which is used in every single deck at diff varying ratios. And there are seven extra of them, and they're $80 a piece, which shaves off another $560 from there. And then there's also Enlightened Strike, 
bike, which is $40 a piece, which we have five extra. So we shave off another 200 and then another couple cards here and there. So in total, through duplicates, we shave off $1,548 from this, which makes our grand total go from $3,720 to $2,172, which makes our deck average $434. Flesh and Blood, spoiler alert, is the most expensive game on here, but once you take out duplicates, it's actually not that far ahead of some of the other games. And then the last game is the Dragon Ball Super card game. So the Decks I'm using for here are SS4, Goku, and Vegeta, Gamma 1 and 2, Sin Shinron, Android 21, and Kumba. Yeah, I think that's how you say that. And here are the prices, which brings our total with no duplicates to $1,895, which makes our cost average $379 per deck. So looking at the duplicates, Dragon Ball kind of has the one piece problem where because of you being locked into certain colors, a lot of decks in their colors have different card packs packages within them. So if you invest in the one color, then the game gets a lot cheaper if you only play that color. But if you're playing it with a bunch of different colors, the game gets a lot more expensive. So the big two colors on here are blue and red. There are two decks for each of those on here and they share a lot of cards. So all the red decks are running Defender of Friends Gohan, the Merciless Barrage Yamcha, and the SS4 Gogeta. So those together shave off about $90 with a couple of other like cheap red cards as well. And then a lot of the blue cards run this Android package between Android 17, 18, and 21. And those themselves shave off a ton of money itself, which all together, we are shaving off $248, which reduces our total from 1,895 down to 1,647, which makes our cost average 329, which is still pretty expensive. But just like in One Piece or Vanguard or Magic, if you invest in the one color, then the game gets cheaper if you only play it play that cult. So, with all of this in mind, here are the rankings of the deck prices before we start cutting dupes. So the most expensive game is Flesh and Blood. And then number two was Vanguard. Vanguard was the only other game that broke $2,000. And then Yu-Gi-Oh! was about $300 under that. Magic was $50 under that. Dragon Ball was $50 under that. And then we shoot down the Battle Spirits by over $800. And then after Battle Spirits, we start going under $1,000 territory with Y Shorts and then One Piece and then Digimon and then Pokemon. So this is before we cut the duplicates. This is the current ranking of these games price-wise. But once we cut duplicates, a couple things happen. So our top three is still the same, in the same order. So Flesh and Blood, then Vanguard, then Yu-Gi-Oh! And then Dragon Ball and Magic swap. Magic shoots down over $600, which makes it a lot cheaper. And Dragon Ball only shot down about $250. So Dragon Ball becomes a more expensive game than Magic once we cut duplicates. And then Battle Spirits disappears, and Weishwartz is next at its same price. And then One Piece, and then Digimon, and then Battle Spirits spirits at the ninth highest because of the absolute ice shield shaving off $480 from it the game goes from sixth to ninth on most expensive which is really insane and then Pokemon is still at the bottom Pokemon will probably always be at the bottom. It takes a lot for that to change, usually. So, closing thoughts on this, it seems like there's basically a split between expensive games and cheap games. Games typically getting in that six to $900 range, they're usually about 500 or less or a grand or higher. And you can really see the difference it makes when games have cards that are splashable in every deck because Magic and Battle Spirit shot down a lot of money through their system of doing that and then the games that naturally have more restricted deck building rules are typically more expensive so this was a very interesting experiment if you are looking to compete in any tcgs this can be a very good indication of like what you're getting yourself into financially if you're wanting to compete so knowing your budget and how often you want to compete in these games this will basically be a solid guideline on doing that and yeah thank you all for watching this has been a interesting topic on my mind because as a vanguard player i can see the prices rising my whole channel is built off budget stuff and i wanted to compare it between every other card game and as of recently i've been investing into other games and seeing the like price difference is so insane to me so i really wanted to do this type of video for that and to help you guys better financial decisions for yourself so yeah, thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.